Thank you so much to Caro for sponsoring this video. Preface. When it comes to live action adaptations, I'm kind of similar to how Cody Ko reacts to seeing tall guys winning. I'm salty right off the bat. And also, I'm not like a super, super hardcore fan of the books. I don't really know what's going on that much. I've read the first book a bunch of times. The second book a couple of times, I do still need to read the rest of the series. And also, I know I'm in the minority when it comes to people not enjoying the Percy Jackson show, which I think is a really good thing. From what I've seen of all of the actors and like everybody involved with the show, they all seem super nice and super cool. So I'm glad they're getting to experience a supportive fan base, a lot of people enjoying their show. I think that's all great. And genuinely, I do feel bad that I'm not having a good time because <laughs> I want to have a good time. I feel like I've been the opposite of what the popular opinion has been recently. For example, when I went to see the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, I didn't love it, but the majority of people did. Um, went to see the Mean Girls movie, I loved it. I had a blast and people were kind of ragging on it recently. And then now with this show, it never really hooked me. It, it really didn't from the first episode. And I was trying to give it a chance and there's still two more episodes that need to come out at the time that I'm filming this. I don't know, I just, I couldn't get behind it and I haven't been enjoying it. I've been watching it to know what's up, but I think there are a couple of reasons why I am not loving the show and I'll explain it to you right now. Personally, my biggest complaint with this show is the amount of exposition they're shoving down my fucking throat. And let me just say, I understand why they're doing it. And I understand that you need a lot of exposition to gain the knowledge, the necessary knowledge in order to enjoy the show and to understand everything that's going on to the fullest. I feel like the golden rule in film and television is to show and not tell. And that's something that this show isn't doing too well, but in order to show and not tell, sometimes you need a bigger budget. And so just dialogue exposition dumping, that's the way to go. That's the easiest solution and sometimes that's the only thing that's gonna work in this case. But it's something that annoys me. Like it's one of my pet peeves in show in shows and television. So I think that it probably bothers me more than it bothers the average person. Just because the second I feel like I'm being exposition dumped, I kind of like, I don't know, zone out. And it happens so much in every single episode. Some of it is better than others. And I was going to give like the first episode a break because generally like in the beginning, you need to have that in order for the viewer to be grounded. But then it kept going. In every single episode, there are large chunks of dialogue where they're explaining something extensive. They're explaining what's going on. They're recapping everything like a bunch of times, explaining the action that's going on in the moment. And sometimes I feel like that's unnecessary. I feel like sometimes I'm watching an audiobook <laughs> of Percy Jackson. But before we get into these next little things, let me talk about the sponsor of today's video. Thank you so much to Caro for sponsoring this video. I'd say my top goal for 2020 is to be healthier. Now, what exactly does that mean? Personally, I am super, super bad at managing stress. I'm also not that attentive when it comes to my diet. Like I'm very, I'm a very lazy cooker. I just cook what's most convenient. And so surprise, surprise, are my bowel movements the most regular? Hate to say it, but no. Carob offers a curated set of products that are designed to work with research-backed ingredients and optimal doses. Their app even helps you track how you're feeling and play back insights about your results over time. So you can adjust your routine as your needs change. So basically you take a quiz and it determines what sort of supplements would be most helpful to you. I have my little customized card right here. I got B-complex for stress, a multivitamin with iron and a probiotic blend for my diet, prebiotic plus for digestion and vegetarian collagen to help my skin. And I love that they come packaged all cute. See and you know they have like a song lyric or a fun fact so that's always fun. I'd say the B-complex and the prebiotic and probiotic are my faves. I've been feeling more energized and you know my gut feels better. Feels less tumultuous in there. Take care of quiz to find out what's recommended for you. You can use the QR code or click the link in the description below and use my code AmandaT50 for 50% off of your first order. Thank you so much to care of for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. So exposition has been something that's been really bothering me with this show and the one one other thing that I'd say is at the top of my list is the way in which they go about revealing important information. When there seems to be something suspenseful, when there is an identity that's to be revealed, what I've seen with this show is that it happens right off of the bat so that you don't give the characters or the viewers enough time to like try to figure it out for themselves. For example, and I have several, in the first episode, Sally, Percy's mom, tells Percy in like the beach cabin thing that his dad is a god, a literal god. I was not a huge fan of that decision because I kind of wanted to see Percy kind of super confused, stumbling into camp, not knowing what's going on, having the, his own realization that if he is at camp, 
then his dad has to be a god. Like, I kind of wanted to see that progression instead of Sally just like telling him right off the bat at the beach. Also, the news that Sally Jackson is alive, which was given in the second episode by Grover to Percy, also wasn't a huge fan of that decision just because I feel like it didn't have the weight that it did in the book because she had literally just died in the previous episode. And then now you're being like, oh wait, actually psych. It doesn't have that um, sense of betrayal feeling that's supposed to have to it because we don't even have time to process the fact that she's dead. I don't know, I feel like it could have had more weight to it if you waited to reveal that information later, like in the book. And then it happens again with Medusa, Annabeth immediately knowing off of the bat when she saw like the Auntie M sign, Medusa literally walking out and straight up saying, Hey y'all, I'm Medusa. I feel like that could have been executed better. I mean, I understand, I understand what Rick was trying to do with Medusa's character, how Medusa is not being portrayed as straight up a monster. You know, she has backstory, there's tragedy, all that good stuff. But from a viewer's perspective, it made it more boring. It really took away an element of suspense. Like instead of the kids stumbling across this creepy gnome emporium shop, seeing all the figurines, being, you know, entranced by the smell of food and kind of falling into her trap a little bit before snapping out of it and then having a fight, you know what the stakes are immediately. And then you're just kind of like sitting with that, marinating. <laughs> and then the same thing also happens at the Lotus Casino. And I know that a lot of people didn't like, you know, the whole Lotus Casino episode, but I'll get to that later. Immediately, you know, Percy and Annabeth, everybody, they knew that something was up. They knew that the lotus flower had to do something like it, it was in the air. Like they, they immediately knew what was going on with the whole Lotus Hotel Casino. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of confused as to why that's the go-to method for the show. I feel like it may have something to do with like, you have a character like Annabeth who's supposed to be super smart. And so if she's smart, shouldn't she be able to put the pieces of the puzzle together? You know, right off the bat, she's seeing all these things. She's making those connections. She should know, right? I mean, I don't really know. They're also 12. <laughs> and Annabeth can be the first one to figure it out, you know, eventually after they stumble through like in confusion for a little bit. But I feel like knowing stuff right off the bat, you're telling me these really, you know, important reveals that are supposed to come after like a suspenseful, eerie encounter. It just doesn't make sense to me why you would do that because that seems like the less fun and suspenseful option. So anyway, I'd say that those are my two biggest things as to why I'm personally not enjoying the show that much. Some also mini like minor points, minor quibbles that don't really bother me that much, but I'm just gonna bring it up anyway now that we're talking about this. So we've got the action sequences. And there hasn't been, I mean, there's been some good battles, but um, I think in general, there are a couple ones that fell flat. Like the first encounter with Mrs. Dodds at the museum is one that I can think of. I mean, the Medusa scene, I know that there must have been some sort of censorship, you know, with the fact that this is PG. So maybe they weren't allowed to show Medusa's decapitated head. But I liked the Minotaur. I liked Capture the Flag. I liked the Chimera battle. I liked uh, the whole um, Tunnel of Love sequence with Percy in the chair. And speaking of that, I actually, one thing that I do really like about the show, Percibeth. I feel like the movies didn't really capture it in the way that I wanted to, and this show is doing it a lot better. And probably part of the reason why I really like the Percibeth interactions is because generally, there's not a lot of exposition dialogue. You know, it's them too, you know, kind of working out their, um, you know, feelings towards each other. And then you have these really good moments like the chair scene, which was really, you know, emotionally riveting, I felt. From what I've been seeing of people's reactions on TikTok, a lot of people, in addition to bringing up the exposition thing, they bring up pacing. I don't really know how to identify good and bad pacing. If the scene feels like it's moving too slow or too fast, then generally that's probably a pacing issue, which is something that I don't really like pick up on. But I do feel like the, the way that the dialogue is flowing is super duper slow. And maybe I'm just used to like scrolling on TikTok, like these two second quick, quick, quick interactions that seeing a show like this is, you know, it, in my mind is like, make it go faster. So, you know, that's honestly probably a me issue, but the way that I'm perceiving the show every, si like this is what a scene feels like to me. This, this isn't a game. I, what I need to do, what I want to do, is to do it the right way. Not the wrong way, but my way. <laughs> That's kind of how it feels to me. And then another thing that I feel like a lot of people bring up is the changes between the book and the show, you know, 
plot wise. And to be honest, that's not really something that I care about too much. Like the little changes that you need to make in order to, you know, switch between different mediums from a book to a show. That's, um, it's, it's inevitable. You're gonna have to make some tweaks here and there. There have been some pretty major changes, especially with the ending of the Lotus um, Hotel slash Casino episode that just came out. It's the most recent one that I've seen while I'm filming this. The ones that have bothered me personally, Sally and Gabe's relationship, that has definitely changed. The power dynamic in the book was Gabe held the power. There was domestic violence and Sally needed to be a little bit of a doormat in a sense for survival, you know? She valued Gabe's overwhelming stench and in order to have that in her life, in order to protect Percy, she was willing to do whatever it took. Keep to put up with with a, an abuser and all that comes with that in order to protect Percy. It was a major sacrifice, right? And in the show, the relationship is completely different. It just seems like Gabe is, you know, kind of a casual asshole and Sally can hold her own against him. She can, you know, quit back with the with the with the remarks her as well. So I don't know. I guess I don't I, I wouldn't say the change bothered me, but I'm kind of wondering what prompted that change. Another thing, Luke. Luke's involvement. So Luke, spoiler alert, ends up being, you know, the friend who ends up betraying Percy, right? According to the prophecy. The clues that the reader got in the first Percy Jackson book as to, you know, who that traitor ended up being. So there was a monster that attacked Percy during the capture of the flag, ga flag game that was summoned by Luke. That doesn't happen in the show. Then also Luke gives Percy these shoes, these flying shoes that end up almost betraying him, but didn't in the book because Grover ended up wearing them. And you know, when Percy and Annabeth contacted Luke um, in the books, during their quest, Luke made sure to be like, oh, you're wearing those shoes, right? Which didn't happen in the show also. So it's making me wonder like, how, what's, what's going on with that? And then of course, at the end of this newest episode, Percy was given four pearls or whatever they were called instead of three because in the books these three pearl orb things would get them out of the underworld and percy wanted to save himself annabeth grover but also his mother and so then he had to make that difficult like decision now that he has four of those bitches there's no problem there <laughs> like everybody can get out safely and then also the summer solstice deadline passed apparently so war is coming that's new. <laughs> I'm super curious to see what's going to happen with that. So yeah, I don't know y'all. I, I really, really did want to like it. I really did. I, I was hoping since episode one, they would kind of like change the vibes a little bit. There would be less, you know, talking about stuff that I'm not really interested in. <laughs> you know what? I, I guess the problem with the show is that it is too, like, it's not dumb enough for me. I'm not built for the slow dramas, I guess. It is what it is. It's probably mostly a matter of personal preference and it's not to do with it. It doesn't have anything to do with like technical or structural stuff. It's probably just personal preference, but you know, there's still two more episodes left and who knows, those might be like the ones that I really like. So you may be thinking, Amanda, what's your solution to like all the problems that you brought up? What it, what ever could be the solution? Instead of making live adaptations of books, we make them animated. <sighs> and you may be thinking, is that just because you're a sucker for animation? No. I'm gonna be so real. I enjoy things like 10,000 times more when it's animated. I can't help it. That's just, that's just how I was built. But I do think it would be super cool to see, you know, books like this be in an animated form because you have all of this magic supernatural stuff that needs CGI anyway. So I feel like it would be kind of fun to see stuff in animated form when you're not hindered by the costs of CGI. Now, granted, I don't really know what the financial difference between making a fi like live action film versus making an animated thing. Is it more expensive to do animation or is it more expensive to do live action? Because intuitively to me, I feel like it would be more expensive to do something that's live action, but maybe live action stuff performs better. It's all about the money, ain't it? Anyways, let me know your thoughts. Let me know the vibes. Let me know if you feel the same way or not. That's totally fine. I hope y'all had a good time watching this. I hope you're having a good day and I will see you next time. Bye.